are uh, passionate about theology and uh, it's a good thing. Uh, kaso may mga pagkakataon na uh, our passion for uh, theology ay uh, will get us uh, into trouble. In eh, yung uh, binabagit ko ay hindi yung uh, trouble about sa mga tao na outside the church na uh, they don't believe the gospel. Siyempre kasali yun. Pero more uh, significant sa atin and sometimes more uh, painful ay uh, kapag uh, because of our passion for theology ay nagkaroon tayo ng conflict uh, with uh, fellow leaders, with uh, uh, other members of our church or uh, maybe pastors uh, sa ibang church. Uh, nine years na po ako na nagpapastos sa uh, Baliwag Bible Christian Church. Pero before that, ay, uh, for five or six years, ay, uh, nag-serve ako na elder ng church. And then, uh, y- yung time na yun, uh, early 20s, uh, very passionate ako sa theology, uh, especially about uh, reformed uh, theology. So, merong time na parang, siyempre, as a good elder, dapat pinag-uusapan natin yung uh, theology. Uh, sa mga elders meeting para magkaroon ng clarity. So, gusto ko lang i-clarify kung uh, ano yung understanding ng church ng mga leaders about uh, yung regeneration, about faith. Okay, so, uh, pero merong isang uh, elder sa church namin na galing siya from uh, Methodist background na merong, uh, uh, merong ibang uh, theological uh, conviction. So, nag siya. Doon lang naman sa gusto ko na mapag-usapan yung mga yung theology as a church. Pero nag-react siya in ways na uh, hurtful uh, for me, na parang uh, lumalabas na because of my doctrinal convictions, ay hindi ako dapat naging uh, elder ng church or dapat nga hindi ako naging uh, member ng church. So I, I feel na parang uh, parang heretic uh, yung tingin sa So that's uh, uh, very hurtful. So nagkaroon ng uh, bitterness sa heart ko, nagkaroon ng uh, anger sa heart ko. Uh, although syempre pag nakikita kami ngayon ay uh, medyo civil naman yung treatment namin sa isa't isa. Na eventually, uh, umalis siya sa, sa church and uh, patawarin ako ng Panginoon na kinatuwa ko pa yung uh, pagalis niya sa, uh, sa church. So not, not, not just yung uh, passion natin uh, for uh, theology, but even yung passion sa ministry. Like uh, last uh, last year, ay uh, nagsimula po yung church namin to uh, uh, to envision na kasi as we uh, as we uh, preach the gospel, as we go deeper into the gospel, and yun naman yung uh, naging uh, passion ko since uh, ako yun na naging pastor sa uh, sa church namin. So we uh, we go wider in the world. So may kaming uh, vision or yung tinatawag namin na gospel ambition na by 2020 ay yung one local church namin ay magiging uh, apat na local churches. So, medyo ambitious talaga. So, meron, ana, may, during our uh, elders meeting, meron na namang isang co-elder na nag-express uh, ng uh, slight uh, disagreement uh, dun sa vision nine, or uh, maybe a clarification. Na meron naman siya mga wise and uh, good points, pero uh, may, maybe most of us, uh, katulad ko na, I uh, I find it difficult to respond kapag mayroong mga uh, criticism or uh, mga disagreement. So, uh, naging uh, defensive ako. I uh, try to uh, justify uh, yung vision na yon and may, mayroon pa ako ng mga nasabi na uh, parang parang putting blame dun sa fellow elder na hindi niya naiintindihan yung uh, uh, process na pinagdaanan ng vision na yon and not being uh, involved uh, so much as uh, sa ministry ng church, yung mga words na I regretted uh, saying. So, hindi ko po alam sa, uh, sa inyo, pero uh, most of us are uh, passionate about theology, we are passionate about uh, ministry, pero dahil doon, uh, we, uh, we encounter yung mga trouble or uh, conflicts uh, sa, ibang, uh, uh, sa ibang pastors, uh, na, uh, sa ibang leaders ng church. Hindi lang dahil uh, parang defective yung theology nila. Hindi lang dahil parang mali yung approach nila sa ministry. Although that may be the case at times. Pero merong ibang, uh, merong ibang theological understanding or conviction yung iba na iba doon sa pinaniniwala natin. Yung ibang tao ay merong perspective about ministry na iba doon sa pinangahawakan natin. So doon pumapasok yung uh, uh, several uh, conflicts. Uh, na na-experience natin. And um, if uh, I will ask you, na dumating din ba sa point na naging uh, bitter kayo? Nagkaroon kayo ng anger sa heart or unforgiveness? Or you responded in uh, defensiveness or self-justification? 
as a result of those uh, conflicting uh, theologies or perspective uh, sa ministry. So yung text po natin ngayon ay uh, will help us um, understand kung paano tayo mag-respond biblically kapag mayroong mga ganong uh, nangyari. And it will uh, always happen uh, sa atin, even if we are faithful uh, sa, sa gospel. So, uh, turn your Bible sa Romans 15. So, dinaanan na ito kanina ni... Uh, Uh, Pastor Ron, so kanina kinakabahan ako, parang uh, kala ko itatakil niya yung topic na uh, inassign sa akin. Pero uh, we'll focus more dun sa relationship between the strong and the weak. Na kung uh, titingnan talaga natin ay uh, ito yung uh, context uh, ng passage na to. Na may, 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 yung sometimes yung uh, chapter divisions ay unhelpful. Kasi yung 15, 1 to 7 ay nakakabit or ending ng section na nagsisimula sa chapter uh, 14, uh, verse 1 about the relationship uh, between the strong and the weak. So tingnan niyo yung verse 1, uh, chapter 15. We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak. So, sino yung strong? Sino yung weak na binabanggit dito ni uh, Apostol Pablo? So, tingnan niyo sa chapter 14, uh, verse 1. And uh, Paul himself aligned uh, aligned himself dun sa mga strong. Sabi niya, As for the one who is so weak in faith, welcome him. So yung mga weak, weak in faith. Okay, and yung strong, strong in faith. So ano ibig sabihin? Na, uh, yes, we, uh, we believe the gospel, pero itong mga strong ay meron silang mas... Uh, Malawak na understanding kung ano ibig sabihin ng grace, the gospel of grace, and how to apply yung grace na yon. Especially sa issue nila na mix yung uh, Jews and Gentiles, so meron tong issue ng pagkain, kung ano yung uh, fit na kainin. So sabi sa verse 2, one person believes he may eat anything. So yun yung strong. Kaya hindi strong, hindi yung malakas kumain. Kaya hindi yung pinag-uusapan doon. Although, iba sa inyo, parang nagkakaroon na kayo ng vision na katulad ni Apostol Pedro na nakakita ng uh, maraming pagkain. Pero uh, hindi yung pinag-uusapan na strong dito. So, uh, Paul was talking about uh, yung uh, spiritual, uh, yung understanding or yung grasp about the message of the gospel of grace na lahat ng pagkain ay uh, fit to eat uh, because, of, uh, uh, because of the gospel. So, yung weakness dito, ng mga weak, ay uh, in terms of uh, deficiency sa knowledge or yung uh, theological understanding. Hindi ibig sabihin na itong mga weak ay uh, more sinful at itong mga strong ay parang sila yung uh, more uh, spiritual. Okay? Kasi kung titingnan ninyo yung uh, chapter 14, uh, these weak people, they were, they were acting in faith naman. Na yung ginagawa nila na Uh, abstinence sa pagkain, yung uh, pag-honor nila sa ibang uh, days, uh, special kaysa sa ibang days, they're doing it for for God, uh, to, to, to honor God. So, uh, ang problem dito, uh, the weak, uh, kailangan nilang matutunan kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng gospel of grace in relation to the law. So, dito sa church sa Rome, nagkakaroon ng conflict between these two kinds of people. Kasi yung mga strong, they can uh, assert what they know. And uh, they, parang they will not act in patience and love to those who are weak. Tapos ito namang mga nasa kampo ng mga weak, they can look at, at the strong na parang arrogant sila or uh, parang uh, flaunting yung kanilang uh, liberty and uh, become critical of them. At iba sa kanila ay nastumble uh, because uh, of how they practice uh, their faith. So, sino sa inyo yung strong? Sino sa inyo yung uh, weak? Although, siyempre, in our pride, we want to align ourselves with, uh, with the strong. Pero, we all need uh, to grow. The strong needs to grow. The weak uh, needs to grow. Kasi, the strong may be, maybe, we may be strong in our doctrinal convictions, but we may be uh, weak in terms of uh, loving our brothers. And the weak may be weak in uh, doctrinal knowledge, but they may be strong in uh, loving uh, their brothers uh, as a church. So, we all need to grow both in knowledge and in love. So, commendable yung uh, zeal natin for uh, theology, pero kapag nakalimutan natin na meron din tayong obligation to love our brothers kahit na different yung kanilang theological convictions, 
maybe merong defect din dun sa theology or yung understanding natin ng theology. Okay, tingnan niyo sa uh, chapter 15 verse 1. We who are strong have an obligation. Okay, pag pinapagka, if you hold on uh, yung conviction mo sa doctrines of grace, kapag narinig mo yung word na obligation, it sounds uh, legalistic. Tama? It sounds legalistic. But it is not legalistic. That's biblical. So, uh, as long as we have yung right and gospel motivations na pag natin mamaya. Okay, so... Kailangan pong ipaalala sa bawat isa sa atin na meron tayong pananagutan sa bawat isa. Yung word na obligation sa original na Greek, ay, uh, it refers to something we owe to other people na kailangan nating bayaran. Okay, hindi dahil meron kang uh, utang na kailangan mo bayaran. Siguro somehow, similar to this, uh, yung, di ba meron tayong uh, mga Pilipino na utang na loob? Okay, but it's actually different. Kasi pag yung otang na loob, uh, meron kang uh, ginaganti sa kanya na kasi meron siyang ginawa na mabuti sa'yo. Pero yung obligation na binabanggit dito, kahit na walang ginawa na mabuti sa'yo, kahit na masama pa yung ginawa sa'yo, you still, uh, no, uh, you still have an obligation uh, to love your brother. Halimbawa, sa so chapter 13, Ginamit pa ulit-ulit yung word doon na utang, yung O. Bayaran ninyo yung pagkakautang ninyo. Uh, sa chapter 13, verse 7, di ba? Pay to all what is owed to them. Na binigay niya yung responsibility natin sa government. Na it doesn't matter kung yung government na meron tayo ay honest or corrupt. Meron tayong obligation as citizens. And then sa verse 8, inapply niya yung... Uh, yung obligation na yun sa relationship natin sa love ng church. Sabi niya sa verse 8, Oh, no one anything except to love each other. So, na sabi dito ni uh, Apostol Pablo? Mel, in, our, in our passion for the gospel or the good news, may mga times na sinasantabi natin yung law o yung obligation natin. As if the law is a bad thing. No. The law is good. Tayo yung we are not good. The law is good. Diba? Yes, we believe the gospel. Now, we are all lawbreakers. And we are all guilty of breaking the law. Pero pinadala ng Diyos ang Panginoong Iso Kristo. He himself is the law giver. And he became uh, a law keeper on our behalf. And on the cross, anong tingin sa kanya? Na para ba siya yung law? Para ba siya yung lawbreaker? Na, na punish, condemn for the guilt na dapat sana tayo yung magbayad. Para ano? And that's the gospel. Para ano? For us law breakers to be treated by God as law keepers. The second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Na tayo ay unrighteous, but because of Jesus, we are treated as righteous. Pero wag nating, wag nating isipin na yung freedom na meron tayo, we are freed from the condemnation of uh, yung guilt of breaking the law. Hindi ibig sabihin na yung freedom na yun ay freedom to break the law. Kundi yung freedom na yun, yung gospel, ay yung power na kailangan natin to fulfill yung mga obligations of the law. Yung ano sabi sa verse 8? Oh, no one anything except to love each other sa so chapter 13. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law on our behalf na by that same gospel na yung power na kailangan natin so that we can fulfill the law of loving our, loving our neighbors. Kahit yung mga ka-conflict natin sa church, kahit yung mga pastors na we disagree sa kanilang, kanilang theological convictions, kahit yung mga leaders na lagi nagkikritisize sa atin, we, we have an obligation to love them. whether we like it or not. Hmm. Obligation. Ibig sabihin, kailangan gawin. Hindi niya sinabi na, I have a recommendation for you or I have a suggestion for you. We have an obligation. So, uh, verse 1. Ano yung obligation na yun? Negatively, sabi niya, not to please ourselves. We love, uh, we love ourselves 
Pang sinasabi ni iba, love yourself first because before you can love others. Pero nowhere, nowhere in scripture na we are commanded to love ourselves. Kailangan ba tayong utusan na mahalin ang sarili natin? We already love ourselves and we love ourselves too much and yung love natin for ourselves must may, may, might get in the way of us loving our neighbors. So sinasabi niya dito, ang obligation natin not to please ourselves. So positively, sabi niya sa nauna, an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak. Ito yung sinasabi ni Paul sa Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yes, mayroong mga errors yung ibang tao na kailangang itama. Diba? May meron din silang mga sinful reactions na kailangang i-rebuke. But we must respond in love to them. Natulungan natin sila. Na, eh, hindi ko alam, if you are familiar dun sa uh, madalas na kinakanta sa uh, loob ng simbahang katoliko, na galing naman ito sa uh, Romans chapter 13 and 14, na tayong lahat ay may pananagutan sa bawat isa. Nadali natin yung pasani ng bawat isa. Na sometimes we think na parang yung mga tao na to ay uh, it's a very heavy burden for us to carry pero sila din mayroong burden na kailangan nating tulungan na, na buhatin din. Okay, so uh, verse 2. Paano natin sila matutulungan? Let each of us please his neighbor. Okay, hindi ibig sabihin na magiging people pleaser na tayo. Na parang mayroong uh, mga may kampo sa church na gusto ang kotina ay uh, asul. Yes, yeah, sige, papayag tayo. Eh, yung kabilang kampo naman, ang gusto ay ang kotina ay uh, pink. O oh, sige, oh, mas malaki pa nagbibigay yung mga kampo na yun. Sige, agad tayo. Di ba? When we talk about pleasing other people, hindi ibig sabihin magiging people pleasers tayo. Kasi yung, yung, yung sinunod niya sinabi, we please other people for their good. Pero kapag kinocompromise na natin yung gospel, and we tend to please other people rather than God, katulad na sinasabi ni Paul sa Galatians 1.10, we are no longer being uh, servants or slaves of God. But we must please other people first before we please ourselves. Yun yung sinasabi dito ni Apostol uh, Pablo. For his good to build him up. Ito yung part na Alam natin na yung call sa atin to discipleship is a call to deny ourselves. But we deny ourselves not just in following Jesus. We also deny ourselves in helping other people follow Jesus. Nakasama dito yung mga tao na nagdi-disagree sa atin o nagki-criticize sa atin. Kaya paulit-ulit sa chapter 14, yung sabi ni Paul, Do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. Na in responding to conflicts, na parang we are so quick na i-defend yung reputation natin or yung ideas natin or yung convictions natin, are we being careful na we are not destroying the work of God? Katulad ng sinasabi sa verse 20, Do not destroy the work of God. Yung mga kapatid natin na meron tayong conflict, Mayroong ginagawa ang Diyos sa kanila. At huwag tayong maging hadlang sa ginagawa ng Diyos para sa kanila. So, sabi niya sa uh, verse 5, ito yung prayer niya. Na kumilos ang Diyos for us to live in such harmony with one another. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng harmony? Na kasi para tayo, uh, di ba ito, wish natin. It's our dream as pastor. Sana, dito sa church, pare-pareho tayo ng theological convictions. Sana, pare-pareho tayo ng passion for the ministry. Sana, pare-pareho tayo ng mga worship preferences sa church. But that's not harmony. Ang harmony, in spite of our many differences, katulad ng isang orchestra, we are playing beautiful music together. That's harmony. And as long na Yes, we have differences. Pero ang pinakamahalaga, we all agree and we are all passionate for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hell, syempre, may mga pastors na mayroong iba't ibang level of understanding when we talk about the gospel. And because of that gospel, sabi sa verse 7, welcome one another. Ano ibig sabihin ng welcome one another? Uh, hi, hello, kumusta ka na? Okay? Hindi yun ibig sabihin ng welcome one another. So, sabi sa King James, receive one another. Or accept one another. Kasi, like, uh, ngayon po ay, uh, by the grace of God, tinawag din ako na just to lead our uh, district uh, sa Pampanga, Bulacan, Nueva Ecija. That's uh, 30 churches. And then, mayroon mga pastors ng different churches na mayroon silang uh, conflict. Pero, atin sila ng meeting as if parang, uh, parang wala. Pero mayroon. So, maybe you welcome each other's uh, gathering or maybe sa loob ng church. Pero yung question sa atin, do you welcome that brother in your heart? Do you accept him as a brother? Katulad ng pagtanggap sa kanya ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. So, madali po bang gawin yung obligasyon na sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo sa atin? Salamat po sa pag-amin. Mahirap gawin. Kasi it will require a change of focus sa sarili natin. We are so self-focused. Mahirap pero hindi imposible. Kaya nga, ang haba-haba na ng section ni Paul sa Romans 14 hanggang Romans 15, tapos parang sinasabi niya na sa verse 5, Okay, may God help you do this. <laughs> Tulungan sana kayo ng Diyos uh, na gawin ito. So, God can make the impossible possible. Only the Spirit has the power to break the hardness of the heart of us pastors and transform it to become more like Christ. Kailangan matuto tayo kung saan tayo tumingin. Instead of looking to ourselves or instead of looking sa failures ng iba, we need to learn to look at right biblical gospel motivations. And throughout this uh, uh, throughout this passage, ay talagang punong-puno ito ng gospel motivations. I'll just mention three. Okay, number one. So yung motivation number one, the Son of God. Yung ano sabi ni Paul sa 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Now we are being transformed to become more like Christ. Kasama dun yung how we respond to conflicts and uh, differences sa loob ng church or even outside the church. Ano sabi niya doon? As we behold the glory of the Lord. Kung kay Kristo tayo nakatingin, we are being transformed. Kung paano mag-respond sa conflicts. As you look to Jesus more and more, you become like Jesus more and more. Okay, so, consider, and this is my number one uh, exhortation about that motivation. Consider Christ's self-sacrificial love. Tingnan niyo yung verse 3. Ano sabi niya sa verse 3? For, eh, ito yung reason bakit niya sinasabi yon. Why we must not please ourselves? Bakit dapat isipin natin yung interest na ibang tao? For Christ did not please Himself. But as it is written, quoted yung Psalm 69.9, the reproaches of those who reproach you, you fell on me. Yes, si Jesus yung example na dapat nating tularan. Pero Paul is set, was setting up si Jesus not just an example, but as a motivation, as power na kailangan natin to live like Him. Bakit? For Christ came not to be served, but to serve and give His life as a ransom for many. Na mayroon ba tayong ganung uh, uh, motto or slogan sa pastoral ministry? Kapag may mga tao na nag-disagree sa atin, that God has called me not to serve, not to be served, but to serve and give my life even to sa mga tao na parang unworthy of uh, service. Na kahit na insulto ng mga tao, yung mga insulto ng tao sa Diyos, inako ni Kristo. At the cross, he was maltreated, abused, mocked, beaten, humiliated. Pero tinis niyang lahat yun. Because he was not looking at his own interest. Pero kung ano yung para sa atin. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng self-sacrificial love. And the number two, consider 
Christ's gracious acceptance of you. Tingnan niyo yung verse 7. Therefore, welcome one another. Ano yung motivation? Ano yung motivation? As Christ has welcomed you, accept one another as Christ accepted you. Yung bang, yung ka-conflict mo, maybe iniisip mo undeserving sila ng acceptance mo. But remember, we just remember this, kung gaano ka-massive yung conflict na meron ka sa Diyos, You only deserve His wrath. You deserve His yung eternal separation from Him. Pero by grace, He has accepted you. He has welcomed you home. He served food on your table. He gave you rest. And you don't deserve any one of that. So consider that. Number three, consider our common union with Christ. Tignan yung verse 5. Yung prayer ni Paul, for us to live in such harmony with one another, ano yung motivation? Sabi niya, ano yung, motiv- ano yung motivation ng harmony na yun? In accord with Jesus Christ. So ano sinasabi niya? We find our harmony and unity in Jesus. Not, hindi dahil sa, not just because pare-pareho tayo na we uphold yung doctrines of Christ. Now we can have fellowship even sa mga ibang denomination or even with Pentecostals because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It may be difficult for us. Like may mga times na umatend ako ng ministerial uh, uh, meeting ng mga pastor sa Baliwag. Eh, karamihan sa kanila ay mga uh, Pentecostals or pero uh, in my heart tinuturo sa akin ni Lord na to look at them as a brother in the Lord. Na yung leader na sa church mo na lagi nagkikritisay sa'yo, remember na, is also in the Lord. Yung, yung ibang pastor na uh, tinitira yung theological convictions mo, they're also in the Lord. Although may mga times pinagdududahan natin kung sila ba talaga <laughs> kisa, no, hindi. But, kahit na alami tayong differences, when we remember that, we really have a lot in common. And His name is Jesus. And number four, consider the Lordship of Christ in our lives. Verse six, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is not just our common union. He is our Lord. Siya yung masusunod. In times of conflict, conflict, Parang gustong sabihin sa iyo ng puso mo na to hate your brother in the Lord? Don't follow your heart. Follow the Lord. In times of conflict, you will hear yourself na sinasabi sa sarili mo. Katulad din na sinasabi ni Paul Tripp na no one talks to ourselves more than we do. Kasi tayo talaga pinaka-influensya sa sarili natin. But don't follow yung voice na nanggagaling sa heart mo. Because the heart is deceitful. And desperately sink. Follow your Lord. Siya yung masusunod. Okay, so that's number one. We look to the Son of God as our motivation. Number two, the Word of God. So in times of conflict, kaya sabi ko lang, prone tayo na sundin yung sinasabi ng puso natin. And some of us, hihingi tayo ng advice sa ibang pastor or church leader, and that's uh, that's okay. Pero kailangan na maalala natin, Yung, encur- yung instruction, yung encouragement, yung endurance na kailangan natin for us to be able to respond well in times of conflict, hindi sa ibang tao manggagaling. Manggagaling sa salita ng Panginoon. So, tignan nyo number uh, sa so verse 3. Consider the Christ-centeredness of the Word. Ano sabi niya sa so verse 3? For Christ did not please Himself, but as it is written, so, kinote niya yung Psalm 69.9 and he applied it to Jesus Christ. Na ano sinasabi niya? He's using the scripture, he's using the Old Testament, katulad ng sinabi ni Jesus sa kanyang mga, sa kanyang mga disciples when he rose from the dead. Sa so Luke chapter 24, verse 44, ano sabi niya? Everything written in about me, in the, the, the books of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms, in all of scripture, must be fulfilled. 
Jesus is the fulfillment of all scripture. So, if, kung ang motivation natin is to look to Jesus, paano mo makikilala si Jesus kung puro Facebook yung uh, inaatok pag natin? O kaya kung uh, tatambay lang tayo sa coffee shop and we're not reading the Word of God. And read the Word of God na Christ, na si Jesus yung nasa center. So it's all about Jesus. The Bible is all about Jesus. Your life is not about you. Yung conflict na meron ka ngayon with the call leader, it's not about you. It's about Jesus. So number two, consider the benefits of the word for us. Tayo mga pastor, ang gagaling natin mag-counsel ng mga members natin kapag may problema sila o kaya nag sila. And then gagamitin natin yung word of God. Alam mo ba ang sinasabi sa salita ng Panginoon? Yes, we believe sa sufficiency of the word. Uh, sa counseling. Pero, are we also using the word of God to counsel our own hearts? Pagating sa mga conflicts na na-experience natin sa ministry? Tingnan niyo yung verse 4. Ka-apply lang niya dun sa yung Psalm 69.9 kay Jesus. And then sa verse 4, he talks uh, more generally about all of Scripture. Sabi niya sa verse 4. For whatever was written in former days, that's the Word of God, was written for our instruction. Iba naghahanap ka, anong kailangan mong gawin? Para ma-resolve yung conflict na kinakaharap mo ngayon. Hindi churchleaders.com yung solusyon. Makakatulong yon Pero the Word of God, we look to the Word of God for instruction. Naghanap ka ng endurance sa mga times na you feel like quitting dahil sa sobrang dami ng conflict na nangyayari sa church. And I remember yung pastor na nag-mentor sa akin when I was still in college na talagang sobrang dami ng conflict sa church. Ang dami mga, li- mga members na saying something against him. And I don't know, maybe parang dumating yung time na just, ayoko na. And then he quit, he resigned, he moved on uh, sa ibang church. You want, you, need, you want yung endurance na kailangan for us to endure sa ministry? Read the Word of God. Basahin mo yung story ni Moses, basahin mo yung story ni Abraham, ni Daniel, ni Jeremiah. And you will find encouragement and hope from the Word of God. And then number three, consider how dependent we are to God to apply His Word to us. Iba sabi sa verse 4, yung scripture ay for our endurance and encouragement. Tapos sige na yung verse 5. Sabi sa verse 5, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you. So ano sinasabi niya? Babasahin natin yung scripture for, for ourselves. Pero at the same time, we admit, katulad ng ginagawa ni Paul, na yung words dito ay not enough. Yes, it is powerful. We believe in the power of the Word of God. As long as the Spirit of God is applying that Word to us, hindi natin kayang mag-manufacture ng endurance sa sarili natin. We cannot encourage ourselves. We need God to give us endurance, encouragement, and hope, and instruction in times of conflict. So dumating ba tayo sa point na ganon? We just come to God, pagkabasa natin ng scripture, and ask God na, Lord, I just need help right now. Hindi ko kaya. Hindi ko kaya kausapin yung tao na to. I cannot love him. I cannot treat him with kindness. We don't just pray for the heart of the other person. Kaya natin gawin yun eh. O kaya natin ipag-pray yun. Na Lord, baguhin mo siya, baguhin, baguhin mo siya. But are we praying for ourselves? Na Lord, may you transform my heart to become more like the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, that's motivation number two. Your motivation number one, the Son of God. Your motivation number two, the Word of God. Your motivation number three, the glory of God. Because if, if we are really honest, nag-react tayo like, like ako pag may nababasa ako na mga post uh, na mga pastor na friend ko sa Facebook pero yung post ay uh, parang anti-Calvinism so ba 
parang mayroong sa heart ko na nag-react uh, violently. And if you're going to be honest, yes, we love the glory of God, pero kung titingnan natin yung heart natin, parang masabi natin we love our own glory. That's why we react that way. Ayun natin na masabi na mali yung pinaniniwalaan natin. So a necessary corrective is for us to be more passionate for the glory of God above all else. Number one, consider God's glory as the passion of the heart of Christ. Then you verse Yung sa verse 3, yung quotation niya doon, di ba, sa Psalm 69.9, actually, second half lang yun eh. Yung first half ng quotation na yon ang nakalagay, zeal for your house has consumed me. Naalala ninyo kung saan nakalagay yon John 2.17. Yung story ng uh, cleansing ng, uh, ng temple, na kahit na maraming mga religious leaders na nagsasabi ng insult or mockery sa kanya, kahit na maraming uh, against him pero yun nagmumove sa kanya to serve other people even give his life for others even his enemies is his passion for the heart is his, yung kanyang passion for the glory of God so I pray na yung tulad ni Kristo ang puso natin ay maging para din sa karangalan ng Diyos It's not about protecting our own reputation. It's about the glory of the Lord. And then second, consider God's glory as the ultimate goal of the gospel. Sabi sa verse 7, Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. So yung purpose clause for the glory of God or yung end result or yung ultimate goal immediately nakakabit dun sa as Christ has welcomed us. Na ano yung sinasabi? Na yung purpose, bakit tinanggap tayo ni Kristo? Yung purpose, bakit namatay si Kristo para sa, para sa atin? Is for the glory of God. Kaya we're no longer singing sa church yung song na above all. Kasi when he... Ano yung last line doon? Na, he took the fall and thought of me above all. If we are passionate for the glory of God and we know that the, go- the goal of the gospel is the glory of God, hindi na natin makakanta yun because He did not think of us above all. He-, he thought about the glory of His Father above all. That's why He died on the cross. Yung greatest conflict resolution in history, yung peacemaking accomplished by Jesus on the cross is for the glory of God. So anumang peacemaking effort natin, anuman yung ginagawa natin towards unity must be for the glory of God. So yun yung pangatlo. Consider God's glory as the ultimate goal of Christian unity. Di ba? Welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Yung for the glory of God nakakabit immediately sa as Christ has welcomed you. Pero nakakabit din yun sa welcome one another. We welcome one another. We accept one another for the glory of God. Na hindi na ito tungkol sa kung sino yung, ma- ma- yung masabi na tama, sino yung masabi na mali. But it's about the glory of God. Kaya yung prayer niya for us to live in such, such harmony with one another, that together, sabi sa verse 6, we may with one voice, one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we gather every Sunday sa church. Kahit na iba-iba yung personality, iba-iba yung preferences, iba-iba yung theological understanding about the gospel. It's for the glory of God. Kaya we fellowship even kahit sa ibang denomination, even pastors from other churches na meron kanya-kanyang leadership style or perspective sa ministry, we do that for the glory of God. I love singing with other pastors. Na kahit na magkakaiba tayo ng pinanggalingan, we with one voice were glorifying the Father and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, if we fail to respond lovingly sa iba na mayroong different theological positions from us, we are not glorifying God. 
And honestly, I'm bothered kapag may mga pastors na nagpo-post sa Facebook or nagko-comment. Lalo na sa mga pastors theological forum. Na the way they speak, parang hindi ba magkakapatid sa Panginoon yung nag-uusap dito sa forum na to? The way we, they don't respect each other, the way they label yung ibang tao and insult yung mayroong ibang theological position. Kaya na isang araw, siguro na, nabasa ninyo yung uh, post ko sa Facebook. Sinabi ko doon, we study theology for us to be more passionate for the glory of God. Pero kung nakikipag-away ka na dahil sa theological convictions mo, o kung mas tumataas yung level of pride mo kasi sa tingin mo ikaw lang yung tama, or you fail to show love toward those who disagree with you, nag-glorify kaya si Lord. So, kanina sinabi ko na meron akong uh, Facebook friend na talaga na yung post niya puro ano, anti, uh, anti-Calvinism. Na parang pinaportray niya yung uh, Reformed Theology na parang is a heresy. And may mga times na talaga nandun ako sa comment section. Mag, uh, magta-type na. Di ba? Pero God reminded me that that is not the way to help my brother. God reminded me, yes, kailangan pag-usapan, pero social media is not the way to uh, settle yung mga theological disputes. So God reminded me na I need to respond in a way na magpapakita ng pag-ibig ko sa aking kapatid. In a way na consistent sa so word of God, na sinasabi ko na talagang pinangahawakan ko in a, way, in a way na we'll give glory to God to the Lord Jesus Christ and to to the gospel so recently we have a very difficult experience uh, as a church mayroong isang group na they decided na just maging independent na from our church dating church plant namin yon, But because of different perspectives sa ministry, because of different convictions, they decided to act independently. So very painful sa amin yun. And may mga times na talagang pag mag meeting kami, gusto ko nang parang isumbat sa kanila. Yung bang for so many years or sabihin sa kanila, hindi, hindi nyo ba naiintindihan yung, uh, yung vision ng church to, uh, uh, to multiply? Pero pinipigilan ako ng Panginoon. And the Word of God is uh, motivating me. Kasi yung pinag-aaralan namin during this time, yung eh, sermon series sa uh, 1 Peter, how to love one another kahit yung mga tao na we, um, we don't feel like loving them. And for the glory of God, and dahil yun yung pinakitang halimbawa ng Panginoong Iso Kristo. So I don't know about you, pero we need to admit na it's really difficult. Kaya nag-pray si Paul, na Lord, tulungan mo sila. <laughs> That's why I'm praying for you. Na naman yung conflict na kinakaharap ninyo ngayon, may God, may God help you. May God help you love your brother or your sister. May God work in your heart. Ay paalala sa inyo lagi yung gospel na ipinapangaral natin every Sunday. And then may God move in your heart as you read the word every day. And may we all be passionate for the glory of God alone. So our Father in heaven,